Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. I am so, so happy. I'm reading from John 8 and verse 12, which says, Jesus once again addressed them. I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. I am so excited to share this message with you. It feels like this huge thing in my chest is dying to get out. I suspect this is how a woman feels when after however many weeks of pregnancy, that baby inside of her has grown so big and is pulsating so hard against the walls of her womb, saying, I can't stay in here much longer. That is how I feel with this message. Are you ready to hear it? Let me start at the very beginning. So back in Genesis, we read where God created the heaven and the earth. We read that the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the earth, and the Spirit hovered over the waters. Have you ever wondered that nothing was said about heaven? Why? After all, the story starts off by telling us that he made heaven and earth, but darkness was over earth, and nothing is said about heaven. Anyway, let us move on. Then it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Hold it right there. What just happened there? Why is God letting light appear? And what is light anyway? Before there was light, we had no idea that something named light exists because all we knew was the state of darkness. But God in his amazing wisdom spoke light into a world of darkness and immediately darkness had an opposite. Darkness was no longer the only entity, but darkness was now displaced or replaced by light. And what is light? Light is a powerful entity that is more powerful than darkness. Well, what is darkness? We don't want to say the absence of light because that would be corny. But maybe if we analyzed darkness, we could come to a definition. While the earth was covered over in darkness, there was nothing. The Bible said that the earth was void or empty. What did God do when he said, let there be light? God introduced that which was needed for sun and moons and stars to exist, for plants and shrubs to grow, for animals and birds and fish to survive, for humans to function. God created light first. God prepared the earth with what was needed for the ultimate arrival of man, and he started with light. Might I suggest to you that at this time, that when God said, let there be light, that God introduced himself to earth, nothing was said about heaven because heaven was his throne room and wherever God is, there is light. It says it in Revelations 22, that there is no need for light in heaven because God will be there and he is the light. So if God introduced himself to the earth when he said, let there be light, then it means that earth cannot do without God. I mean, light. Earth is formless and void without God if earth has no light. After that day when he made light, everything points to the reality that this planet needs God who is light. But we have a problem. Jesus turns upon the scene thousands of years later and describes himself in the words of the text, I am the light of the world. What is Jesus talking about? This is made even more clearly because in John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, it says, In him, Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. What is going on? Jesus, we don't need you as light of the world because we already have light that God introduced in Genesis 1. Aha! But something is wrong, because why would Jesus turn up when we already have light? That is where the problem is. When Jesus came as light of the world, we were in darkness. What are you talking about? You see, things were going well with the original experience until we get to the drama that unfolded in Genesis 3. When Adam and Eve sinned, it plunged the world into darkness. How was that? Because of our foreparents' error, what they did was that they rejected God and rejected light, and so darkness came back over the world. We, the human race, fell into darkness that day and was already in need of real light. 
That was when Jesus came to the earth, my friend. He knew that the people on the planet walked in darkness. And what happened? In John 3 verse 19, it says that this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Ooh. Because Jesus came into the world and announced himself that he is the light of the world, then it means that he came to free us from evil deeds. So how do we correct this? He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Simply put, if you are dissatisfied with doing evil deed, one deed or another, then you need light. And Jesus is a light and he is available. He says, follow me. And when you follow Jesus, you follow light. So here is a twist that we did not see coming. In Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16, it says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is him speaking to a bunch of his followers. And he explains that when you follow him, you become light. How so? The light of the world comes to live inside of you and transforms you into light. So now, if you are a child of God, you carry light, and so you simply must let your light shine in the darkness around you so that the people can see God in you. They can see light. If this message means anything to you, send me an email at friendofclyde at gmail.com.